Good day everyone. In this video, we're going to go more in depth into what the populist platform is really about. We will also be taking a quick look at who has a vested interest in not only perpetuating the FUD, but more importantly, starting the FUD. With the advent of blockchain technology, smart contracts, and platforms such as Populous, the middleman is looking at losing a lot of business. We will also take a look at some of the recent developments since my last video, and in the final portion of this video, I will display some of my responses to the negative comments that I came across on the YouTube platform. And my overall goal with this video, to reinstate confidence into those that may have lost it, to fortify the confidence for those of you that still have it, and to possibly instill confidence into those of you who may have been looking at the populist platform but have not yet invested. We have been relegated to modern day slaves via the banking system by being taken off of the gold standard, by having our dollars devalued down to nothing. And many of you are probably learning about this now that you're getting into cryptos and understanding that cryptocurrency, smart contracts, blockchain technology is a disruptive technology. Disrupting what? Disrupting middlemen who take way more than their fair share out of invoice factoring. Let's check out invoice factoring. Factoring is a financial transaction and a type of debt of finance in which a business sells its accounts receivable, i.e. invoices, to a third party called a factor at a discount. The Commercial Finance Association is the leading trade association of the asset-based lending and factoring industries, the Commercial Finance Association. I'm sure these are extremely wealthy and powerful individuals who have the means and the power to spread FUD. Overview. There are three parties directly involved. The factor who purchases the receivable, the one who sells the receivable, and the debtor who has a financial liability that requires him or her to make a payment to the owner of the invoice. What is the receivable? It's basically an invoice. And you, my friend, would be the factor. You're the one who purchased this invoice. The seller sells the receivables at a discount to the third party. The specialized financial organization, aka the factor, which is you as a populist token holder, not just holder, but you have to actually be someone who uses the platform and purchases these invoices. This process is sometimes used in manufacturing industries when the immediate need for raw material outstrips their available cash and ability to purchase on account. The process is used a lot in the manufacturing industry. Let's say a tire company needs rubber to make their tires. They need the rubber now, but they really don't have the cash to pay for the rubber because they need to make the tires. They can be in dire straits, or maybe this is just the way that they do business, using other people's money, using your money to create a product, make a profit, so they'll be able to pay back the invoice and make a profit. During the editing process of my video, I had an epiphany. If you own a business, and you've been considering invoice factoring or haven't considered it, you might want to consider it and you might want to do it with Populous. Or if you know of someone who has their own business and may need a cash flow, check out the pros. Compare invoice factoring to a traditional bank loan and there's no competition. Bad credit, limited operating history, loan declined, no problem. You get cash so you can keep the cash flow going and keep everyone happy, keep your customers happy as well as your employees happy. Now here's the real epiphany. Let's say you own a business who qualifies to sell their invoices on the populist platform. And at the same time, you're a populist token holder. You can put your invoice up for sale on the populist platform, purchase your own invoice using your populist tokens to create the cash flow for your business. And at the same time, you get to keep your populist tokens. Once the invoice is paid, you will get your populist tokens back. And you will also receive the capital gains on the increase of the price of the tokens. So it's like lending yourself money without having to cash out your investment in the populist tokens. Ha, you like that, don't you? So that was just a quick epiphany that I had. If you're an investor in Populous, all of us who are investors in Populous, we need to do our part to help the company grow, if you can. We're going to give you an overview of some of the companies that use factoring quite a bit. Real estate, since the 2007 United States recession, one of the fastest growing sectors in the factoring industry is real estate commission advances. Commission advances work the same way as factoring, but are done with licensed real estate agents on their pending and future real estate commissions. Commission advances were first introduced in Canada, but quickly spread to the United States. Typically, the process consists of an online application from a real estate agent who signs a contract selling future commissions at a discount. The factoring company then wires the funds to the agent's bank. 
medical factoring. The healthcare industry makes for a special case in which factoring is much needed because of long payment cycles from government, private insurance companies, and other third-party payers, but difficult because of HIPAA. HIPAA is the Health and Privacy Act. I used to work in the health field, mental health field. But for these reasons, medical receivables factoring companies have developed to specifically target this niche. Construction. Factoring is commonplace in the construction industry because of the long payment cycles that can stretch to 120 days and beyond. However, the construction industry has features that are risky for factoring companies. Because of the risk and exposure from mechanics liens, danger of paid when paid terms, existence of progress billing, use of withholding, and exposure to economic cycles, most generalist factoring companies avoid construction receivables entirely. That has created another niche of factoring companies companies that specialize in construction receivables. The possibilities are endless with populace. Trucking. Factoring is often used by trucking companies to cover upfront expenses such as fuel. Factoring companies that cater to this niche offer services to help accommodate truckers on the road, including the ability to verify invoices and fund on copies sent via scan, fax, or email, and the option to place the funds directly onto a fuel card, which works like a debit card. Trucking factors also offer fuel advance programs that provide a cash advance to carriers upon confirmed pickup of the load. Boom. Another niche market for factoring. But there you have it. Hopefully, you understand a little bit better what this factoring business is all about. If you're a huge holder of Populous, you might be interested in this global factory market 2018 through 2022. Who are the key vendors in the market space? Let's look that up. Let's see, which name? Riviera Finance. Let's see who they are. Founded in 1969, Riviera Finance is nationally recognized as a leader in business financing. Riviera Finance provides full-service, non-recourse invoice factoring to growth companies. We are the experts in accounts receivable management. Riviera Finance maintains the offices throughout North America. This is just one company. They have 20 business development centers, 1,400 clients, 20,000 customer accounts per month. Do you think Riviera Finance is going to like the idea of Populous? No. You, on the other hand, should love it if you're interested in becoming your own boss, becoming your own bank, becoming your own financing company. That is, in essence, what you will become. The more Populous you hold, the more invoices you'll be able to purchase. I don't think there's much more that I can say. You can go on and do some more research on this invoice factoring. Besides buying, we should not be spreading more of this FUD. In my honest opinion, do you really deep down in your heart feel that you will be saving a lot of people from heartache and from losing their life savings? Or do you just want to be able to brag and say that you were right? But on the contrary, you will become very quiet once you see the major success of populace. And you will realize how foolish you were for perpetuating this FUD and trying to slow the process down of us taking control of our own lives again. Okay, let's delve in a little deeper to the blog slash article announcement that was put up on February 9th on Medium regarding the opening or the implementing of the Populous beta version 1.0. Beta testers are usually asked to give as much feedback as they can about the beta software and what sort of crashes are occurring. If the beta software or other parts of their computer or device are behaving strangely, etc. In a nutshell, beta helps the platform to find bugs and security risks. So what is Populous releasing? Version 1.0 entails Populous's latest build progress containing both new and existing features and will be released as a progressive build with changes being made and updated frequently. Version 1.0 will be released with limited, limited, limited functionalities of the software as creating crowd sales, auction for invoice, receiving and withdrawing test tokens from admin. Initially, the beta is not set to be released until the end of February initially, but he went ahead and released it anyway to make some of you happy. So users should not expect this to be a finalized version, but it will give users the opportunity to firsthand experience the software and explore the different functionalities of the platform. However, version 2.0 that will be updated in one week is set to release the functionalities of bid on invoices via individual and group, determine winners at the closing of the auction, and demonstrate the flow of tokens from the winning bidders to the invoice seller. Version 2.0 
O will also include the ability to view all participants in the crowd sale. The main purpose is to test the functionalities of the software that we are relating on beta. Users should be advised to not send real PPT, fiat, or real know your customer data as this is a testing platform. End. Lu Chan, head of marketing, populist. So yes, it is going to be down from time to time. All right, this is awesome. During the recording of this video, more news has been posted on Medium. Medium is another platform to say it's a cross between Twitter and Steam. It appears that it's more for blogging. You can go ahead and set up your account. It's fairly easy. You can set it up either using your Twitter account or your Gmail account. It'll give you the option once you click on sign up. So let's dive into this. What's going on? Populous Legal and Operational Review, February 2018. The relevant information below confirms all legal, operational, and regulatory work completed. 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 In order to progress and establish the developments of the business in the UK and Hong Kong, May 2017. Consultation for risk management of the company provided by Oakfield Miller Ltd. Outlining generic credit risks and mitigating controls as well as deep dive into operational structure and key personnel to be recruited. October 2017. Website agreement terms drafted for populist registered users coming onto the site platform. So that's just drafting the agreement terms. You know when you click agree whenever you sign up for anything online. Okay, November 10th, 2017. Lucy Walker, financial services and regulatory barista of Guildhall Chambers, Bristol, has provided written advice on proposed populist invoice finance operation in the UK and the regulations surrounding same following detailed instructions provided to her on the populist model. And what this is saying is basically the regulations. This individual, Ms. Lucy Walker, is versed on how populists can stay within the laws in the UK. Next, November 2017. Tim Aaron, Contracts Barrister of Outer Temple Chambers, London, has reviewed the following documents drafted by Populous' solicitors in relation to the invoice finance business to be set up. The documents being the invoice finance letter of offer, two, ancillary credit and security agreements to be used by the invoice sellers, number three, invoice finance discount agreement terms, see, invoice discounting, another term used for this business that you will be venturing into. Number four, rules of populist invoice trading platform, the rules. Number five, platform services user agreement. Again, user agreement. First time it was drafted and Tim Aaron also helped with the user agreement. KYC, which is know your customer. AML documentation for invoice buyers and sellers. So this would be know your customer is, you know, getting your customer's information basically. Uh, KYC has been a pretty hot topic within the crypto space. So I'm sure if you frequent the videos on cryptocurrency on YouTube, you would have heard the term KYC being thrown around. It's a must. Okay. December 6, 2017, Jack Lee, based in Hong Kong, was appointed as a consultant to assist with the establishment of populist invoice finance business in Hong Kong. Mr. Lee had previously worked in QBE insurers and traditional finance business in the Far East. The advisory work that Mr. Lee has been assigned is now completed. Hmm. Mr. Lee has provided extensive professional advice on Populous' invoice finance slash factoring process for our consideration. Having accomplished his advisory tasks, Mr. Lee has today resigned from the honorary advisor position. He's done. His work is done. He got paid. He's out. January 16th, 2018. Lawrence Lee and Andrea Yu of Temple Barristers Chambers, Hong Kong, have provided their written opinions on the proposed populist platform model for the establishment of the business in Hong Kong. February 5th, 2018. Instructions have been issued towards the preparation of a draft contract for a populist COO in Hong Kong to be appointed to implement the advice issued from Temple Chambers, Hong Kong, and the drafting of a company employment terms handbook dealing with bonuses incentives, and other matters relevant to populist employees in general in Hong Kong. The end. Lu Chan, head of marketing, populist. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Progress. Moving forward. Doesn't matter what kind of uncertainty individuals out there are trying to throw your way. I'm pretty sure that most of the individuals who have been perpetuating the uncertainty and the doubt aren't even populist holders. And if they are, they're not holding much or they probably got rid of it because they fed into it. Good for us. Price is down. I know people individually who are great supporters of mine who mentioned to me that they've been looking at populist and now because of this FUD that has been spread around, populist has been brought up to their attention, really been looking 
at it closely. And some have went ahead and actually purchased Populous when it was only $25. So that FUD is actually helping. You know, more and more people are actually looking at Populous. There is no such thing as bad publicity. I have worked in marketing. I've ran a magazine. Not only was I the editor-in-chief, I was also the head marketer. So I understand when it comes to celebrities, when it comes to anything, there's no such thing as bad publicity. People want to hear the drama and the drama brings attention. And that is exactly what is needed. So Mr. Bad You, thank you. Okay, next. Our mutual friend at Tom Story was present at the meeting with Lux in September 2017 when we agreed to the deal and authorized press release. Now the deal has been canceled. But what, what was this? Let's take a look at who and what Luxor Global Citizen is. Luxor or Luxor Global Citizen, a luxury rewards platform for the world's most prestigious brands. Connecting luxury brands and clients, working with some of the most prestigious brands, offering members 5% cash rewards. Cartier, Boucheron, Ferrari, Chanel, all luxury. Lamborghini. <laughs> when Lambo, my friends, when Lambo. Timepieces, jewelry, fashion, fragrance, beauty, cars, travel, property, corporate, art, hotels, bars, and restaurants. The app coming soon. LGC coin. Let's check it out. News, February 11th, 2018. This is from Bitcoin.com. In 2017, Luxury Global Citizen identified the incredible potential of creating its own cryptocurrency based on a bespoke business model and structure. Luxury Global Citizen was approached by Populous World LTD with an offer to create a cryptocurrency in return for 10% of the invoices to be filtered through the Populous invoicing platform. This was Pretty genius. I wonder who thought of that. Luxure Global Citizen came to an agreement with Populous World LTD, but made the decision to terminate this arrangement with immediate effect from February 1st. So this was before the FUD started. Keep that in mind. Luxury Global Citizen has retained experts in this field to build its own cryptocurrency internally. For information and updates, please visit the new website, which is launched on February 9th, 2018. Which, at the end of the day, if you're a company and you have the means to create your own crypto, cryptos are booming right now, why wouldn't you decide to just go ahead and say, eh, forget it, we just realized, or maybe someone approached Luxor, or maybe even someone in the company approached the heads, the beards at Luxor, and explained to them, hey, you can cut out that middleman being populist, and we can create the coin for you, or I know someone that can create this coin. This is just business. It's no big deal. They didn't say, oh... Because of the FUD that was released, we really made this decision because if you go back, they decided to terminate the agreement immediately, effective on February 1st. This was before Mr. Bad Grammar went ahead and posted that FUD on Reddit. So it has nothing to do with the FUD. It's just business, folks. When Lambos, <laughs> it's just business, folks. Business is business. They reneged on it. That's okay. There are way more invoices out there to be snatched up besides the ones that Luxor could have provided. Do not be discouraged, folks. Forward always, backwards, never. I received a comment on my last video. Let's check it out. There is no way the UK financial regulators will issue a license to operate to a fintech company whose sitting CEO has prior convictions for fraud. That is not FUD or a claim. That is a fact. In the UK, if you have prior convictions for fraud, you will never be issued a license to operate in any part of the financial industry ever. Okay, so let's take a look at what I was able to find. UK regulators are the most fintech friendly. Policymakers take a liberal view to boost innovation. It is not common for big businesses to praise regulators, yet that is the unusual position in which the UK's Financial Conduct Authority has found itself, at least when it comes to the growing fintech sector. Microsoft singled out the FCA for praise in the May response to the US Treasury's Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, urging the OCC to copy the UK regulator to ensure that innovation be encouraged and not stifled. The UK also topped a recent global survey compiled by professional services firm EY as the most fintech-friendly jurisdiction, with the industry generating $6.6 in revenues and employing 61,000 people in 2015. The FCA, Financial Conduct Authority, for England and Wales. So here we have listed offenses that must be disclosed. See? Find out what information individuals have to disclose to us about criminal convictions. If we go to paragraph 2A of the Rehabilitation Offenders, Act of 1974 in exceptions and order 
1975, which was the amended one. Serious violent and sexual offenses. Let's go to 1975. Okay, so here we are. Legislation.gov.uk, articles 2, 3, and 4. Part 1, accepted professions. What does accepted mean? Look down here, with the exclusion of. Okay. Part 1, accepted professions, offices, employments, and occupations. Take a look at that. You can pause it and read those. I'm just going quickly for the sake of time, but I'm proving my point. Part 2, offices and employments, judicial appointments, public prosecutions, any employment by a local authority in connection with the provision of social services, any employment which is concerned with the provision of health services, youth clubs, local authority or other body with the promotion of leisure or recreational activities. Part 2. Regulated occupations, firearms, gaming, securities, a unit, trust scheme. You can't say securities. It's not an ICO at this point. Secretary of State, nursing homes, explosives. Nothing in here about fintech. The act of 1974. The first one was 1975, which was like, I guess, an amendment. Nothing in here dealing with prior fraud convictions. Boom. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and display my responses to some of the negative comments that I came across on YouTube. I'm going to display them in a form where you can pause the video and read them for yourself if you care to. There were some particular individuals whose true colors were displayed in front of the entire world this weekend. Some colors bleed but ours do not run. And one last thing to ask yourself, who is going out of their way to spread blood regarding your investments? This is Naked Matrix, and for those of you whose confidence was not wavered this weekend, stay calm, stay strong, stay true, and let's change the world, one Bitcoin at a time. Have you got color in your cheek? You ever get that feel that you got shit the tide to 